Hey guys, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan and we're taking a look at a Nissan Atlas camping car. This one here is the full box version on the industrial truck chassis and what's super thumbs up about this car is you get four wheel drive, manual transmission and diesel engine in a camping car and this one is going to be exported to Canada. Now we've had a lot of people ask us about campers recently. It's one of our most popular videos on our channel. I do have to do a little bit of a disclaimer before we sell any campers to anyone. This car was bought from auction and when you buy cars from auction you get a great price but you don't get good information about the inside of the vehicle and in particular the camping equipment that comes with it. Now we sell a lot of regular cars. They're usually no problem at all because the general interior condition is about the same as the mileage but that's not necessarily the case for a camping car because someone might live in it for a long time and wear it all out without accumulating very much mileage so that being said let's jump into the auction sheet here this is the information given to us from the auction as well as kind of three photos sometimes more I think this one had a few more photos of uh, the interior and stuff but uh, generally you don't get that much information about the camping equipment the vehicle vehicle wise it's it's fine uh, so 1999 Atlas Lotus EXE camping car, 3.2 liter diesel engine, four wheel drive, octorade four, interior B. Look at this, only 29,595 kilometers on the car. Now this one's a little bit weird because it was bought from auction and then it was sold again two weeks later, which is usually a bad sign, but it sold later for less than it was originally bought for the first time. So it seems like somebody had had an oopsies the first time and then ended up uh, getting rid of it below the cost that they paid for it. And so a good scoop up there. Now I don't, uh, I don't mention the cost that we bought these cars for in these videos because that's the buyer's privacy. Yes, this has already been sold to someone who has been working with us for a long time. So I'm glad they finally got something good. But if you're looking for something like this, prices range on the low end about 1 million yen and on the high end about 2 million yen. And then cost of shipping to Canada is generally around $4,000 or so plus service fees of uh, about 1,000 to 2,000 depending on the price. Okay, so five-speed manual, one owner. Lo one owner for a camping car is usually a really important thing, or not, I wouldn't say important, but very valuable. Lotus EXE style toll collection box for Japanese highway, part-time four-wheel drive, so you can select four-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. Comes with a toilet, shower. Oh, and if somebody in the comments could tell us when the interior check is coming, that would be great. Someone did last time, and so thumbs up to those people. Thank you very much. Um, comes with a rear heater, a uh, separate heater, uh, gas I believe, and uh, this is the EXE model, comes with, so it comes with the EXE manual, camping car is as is and is not checked by the auction. So here's the auction inspector, he wrote, winter tires, steering wheel wear, scratches and paint fade on the fiberglass box area, seat wear and dirty, various scratches and dents, interior scratch and dirty, and then here we have cracks on the front large scratch here there's actually some uh, cracks in the fiberglass i'll show you paint fade here but there's actually paint fade on several areas in the back as they mentioned over here and then medium scratches on the back okay so we're going to do a once around here as soon as we're done the once around we're going to do the interior postman on a scooter Okay, the size of these I love. I mention that every time because it's a small but big camper. It's big enough for you to stand up completely inside and big enough for you to have a nice camping trip without feeling too cramped, but small enough that you'll get fairly good gas mileage. It's easy to maneuver compared to other uh, vehicles. And in some places, like in Canada, they have regulations for what type of camping cars can go to certain places. And so if your camping car is too big, you may not be able to, like, uh, camp in certain areas. <laughs> I, I guess that's as descriptive as I get for today. I don't know the exact regulations, but uh, sometimes a smaller camper can be useful. Front end looks pretty modern with these nice headlights. I like how shiny and bright they are. There are some rock chips on the front area. You can see like down here that have been touched up with touch up paint. Got the engine running right now, it's running very well. Some surface rust on the mirror here and cracks here and here. Pretty easy to see out of it while you're driving. You sit up really high and Here's something that a lot of people comment about. I don't know if I could drive the car with the steering wheel on this side. 
And for most people, it's not really an issue, but one of the reasons why a camping car like this is easier is because you sit up higher, and so your visibility is much better, even though you are on the other side. For me, I mean, here in Japan, we drive both left-hand drive and right-hand drive vehicles on the road normally all the time. I've driven both for great lengths of time. And for me, it's not really an issue, but you might want to try it out before you decide to buy one if you are looking at a uh, right-hand drive in a left-hand drive country like Canada. So this is the uh, A, I guess they would say that's an A2. It looks pretty, more, pretty much more serious than that. Here's the A3, and it goes all the way along the bottom side up until the rear door. And then the cracked part I was talking about is right in here. This is an engine vent because the engine is underneath your seat. Okay, so this model has the, the bubble top here. That's really cool for the interior. I really like that very much. You get a rather small window on the front here and then one on either side there. These windows are really cool. It has some great options I'll show you once we get inside. We have a top awning, nice large size windows, which you can't stress enough for the side ones. Very important. This is your storage for your propane tanks. It can fit two propane tanks and then there's another area for storage and vehicle jack over there. This one here, there's a key jammed in there that's broken, but this one is a large storage area, but you can also access it from inside the vehicle, inside one of the cabinets. And I'll show you that. This one here I couldn't open. I don't know what it is, but it might be poo-poo because <laughs> it has a toilet. Uh, this is where you put the clean water in. Uh, this one here is storage. And this one here is storage as well as your fuel tank is in there. Okay, so we're not quite ready to go into the back area yet. Some duct tape on the car. That's weird. Okay, so power windows work. Really big windows. You sit right against the front bumper, and so front clearance is very easy to see. Side clearance very easy. And you get a cool extra window because this is a big boy truck. Power steering works great. Five-speed manual shifts so nicely. E-brake works. I didn't check the four-wheel drive because we don't have any mountains to drive up. And the Mini Mount Fuji over here, uh, we'd probably get in a lot of trouble if we drove up that. Headliner's pretty normal here. Curtain here goes around this to separate the driving area from the passenger area. Okay, now is time everybody wants to see. I have the exposure boosted up on the camera a little bit, so everything's a bit blown out, just so that we can see the interior a little bit better. This latch is a little bit weird. Instead of just pulling, you have to push in with your thumb. Okay. Now about the windows, and this is all of the windows, but I'll just show you on this one. They are a dual pane, sort of. They're made out of plastic, but they're not faded or cloudy at all, which is great. But they're made out of uh, plastic, and they're two layers with maybe some sort of a gas inside an insulated gas because that's kind of popular in Japan actually and then each one of the windows has a screen that you can pull down or a shutter that you can pull up so you can completely shut any of them or you can screen them and you can open them you can see like this one open these and then it pops out not easy to do with one hand Okay, going into the vehicle, I'll show you the basics of it and then the details. Okay. Now we get some rattles to the interior here. Not really that bad, but a diesel engine is typically going to rattle a little bit more than your regular engines uh, or a gasoline engine would. It feels like the engine could smooth out a little bit with a little proper running in. Diesel engine will accumulate carbon inside and needs to be run a little bit hard every once in a while. Okay, so for details, we'll start with the shower room. It's really nice in here. There is no window, sadly, but there's a lamp up there. You can stand up completely in the shower room. It's nice and clean and not stinky in here. You get a mirror and a place to put your soap and your little cassette style toilet. And this one here, shower head. 
It's detachable style, and so you can psh, your friends if you want. Okay. <clears throat> Toilet time looks like a lot of fun. Uh, there's actually one more. There. Thetford cassette. Okay. Don't know what those things do. Kind of like flushy type things. A curtain on there in case you want to keep the door open like you're claustrophobic or something. Okay, we got lots of switches and stuff like this up there. This is your water tank level. These ones here are uh, shower, uh, room lights, I don't know, water pump, something, range hood. If you want those translated, please ask us. Here's the range. Range will suck all the air out for your uh, burner. Two burner style, full gas. This one's a water heater, so that's very cool. You don't want to have cold showers. What's this? Oh, that looks fun. Sink, reasonable size. Okay, somebody's flashlight is here. That's cool. Okay, cabinets. This is the big one that opens up to the storage outside. It has the key stuck in it. This one here goes to the same place, and so does that one there. Nice big fridge. Big, big, big fridge. Well, not compared to real fridges, but big for camper. This has a linoleum sheet taped down. Or like a plastic sheet taped down, but the linoleum underneath looks fine once you clean it. So that was probably just put to protect it. Electrical cord so that you can plug yourself into your campsite. Uses the standard fitment so it'll work in Canada. Looks like something used to be attached here so there's screw holes. Okay, big style of cabinets up here and up here, as well as speakers in the top. Vent and light. Big sleeping area from here to there looks like six feet. So, excellent. Maybe even more than six feet. And because of the domed top, you get a really cool looking area up here. Very fancy with the full uh, netting on the windows and stuff. There's a ladder here if you're into it, but if you're like me, you're just gonna climb up here and go in. Now this one here and this one here are removable to give you more headroom going in and out of this area here, especially going from the cabin area to the Dukes of Hazard over there and repeating the same, same jokes. But I said before, in a worse style. Okay, here's your battery level and some sort of uh, device. I don't know what this is. Inverter down there. Okay. And so, uh, bed-wise, we got the super big bed up there. And then this one here turns into a full bed from this wall to that wall, and from this wall to that wall. And so, that guy there, and that guy there, fit in under the table, which gets removed. This one here fits down here, and then there's one square up here, and that fits down there. Up here you get not very thick padding. This is for the kids. Big, thick padding for the parents because they need it. Okay. Now looking at this one here, we got a bit of a rip in the netting. And this netting you can replace pretty easily. Place for your TV. Okay, and uh, what's this? This is a little bit weird. Cup holders, but it's missing the bottom piece. All right, that has to go. Okay, so love these styles of campers. They're kind of more expensive than your typical Japanese camper, but they are very cool. And uh, very nice package. It's the go anywhere camper with the four wheel drive and the diesel. Okay, so hope you enjoy this walk around. It's getting late in the day. There's Andrew sitting in the yellow car waiting to pick me up. And so, I'm gonna go back to the office. Came with a set of uh, spare tires. But uh, that's gonna be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you have any questions about importing a van or a camper or a car, then uh, check out our website. There's a link to that in the description, or you can send us an email and our email contact information is on the webpage. So thanks a lot for watching everybody and have a nice day.